Hey, hey, good morning. Um, new setup. Just kidding. I'm traveling again. So um, I'll try to keep this brief, but I really love the, the routine and the tradition of doing this in the morning. There might be some noises coming from outside the door. Don't mind them. Check out the beautiful pillows I have here in this room. I love you more. What else we got? This this is really cute. <laughs> this is really cute. <laughs> um, last night I got a gift of these rocks, Philippine tektite. It's um a p two pieces of um burnt up plasma meteorite so it sort of like turned to sort of this glass as it fell to earth it says impact event over 78 780,000 years ago and these rocks appear all over the place all over the place you know they cover like 30 plus 30 percent or plus of the planet is how large this event was anyway pretty cool Crystal encryptions. Philippine tectite. So, new rock. New rocks. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, these rocks are allegedly good for opening your third eye. Good for communicating with ETs. This is an ET rock. It's not from this world. How cool is that? <laughs> so, um, today I wanted to talk about... Uh, there's a Mercury retrograde coming this week. Yes, another one in the first of four this year. And I did a little reading last night for it um, with some friends. And the things that came out were such that, um, you know, anything that's a retrograde is really coming to shake things up. You already know about the Venus retrograde if you watched the rest of my videos, but um, it's coming at the tail end of the Venus retrograde. So between, you know, this Wednesday, the 13th, I believe if I have that right through the end of the month essentially is double retrograde which is really fun so things are gonna feel a little bit shook up I think it's gonna feel if we're still in this it's there's a confirmation of this that we're still in this portal right this metaphor I've been using there's gonna be turbulence if you're not doing the work of letting some shit go so the time is now this week you could say to pay attention to the details of anything that you might be missing um, something you may have overlooked or possibly it's time to stop second guessing yourself and get some confidence find some confidence to um, address those things that you might have been ignoring so this is this could be in, in relation to your health this could be in relation to um, it was full moon Virgo so health service assessment um, Pay attention to how, how you've been talking to yourself, how you've been taking care of yourself, how have you been treating others. Um, and maybe there's been a poor judgment call that you need to correct. Okay. Just saying. So, this is... This is a good time to address those things. It's not, you know... I don't think you'll miss this opportunity to address those things, but it's just like the, the, the energy now is helpful in order to um, do the work if that's the work that you're doing. And so the takeaway has been to find balance between the cosmic and the mundane in your daily life. So how can you see the, <laughs> see the cosmic and the mundane in your daily life? This one reminds me of somebody once said, like, how do you do things with intention? Like, you can even wash the dishes with intention. You can sit, make your bed with intention. Like, everything that you do, you can sort of fill with some sort of um, energy of your own. Um, gratitude is like that. When we do things with gratitude, it opens the door to abundance. You know? Versus when we're manifesting from a place of 
not really feeling like our best selves or not or while attracting negativity with envy or jealousy or, or ego or anything like that so and you know what's what's exciting at least we should all be looking forward to what's on the other side of this portal okay the end of this month and then the shadow period at the end of the end of the shadow period March 1st so what the hell's gonna happen there I don't know um, so I will pull a, a few cards today um, even though I read to you what came out yesterday let's read some cards for the collective any more advice for the collective for this upcoming retrograde how to prepare for it I feel like the effects of the retrograde have already begun personally we're over here doing a retreat and like the internet we, we sit down to start working and the internet goes out for like two hours it turns out it was a human error <laughs> And so after we were done with the work, with the work, we figured out how to fix it. And so it's like, this is what I mean, pay attention to the details. Things just might seem like they're moving a little bit fast right now, or just, unor things may seem unorganized, but it's okay. You just sort of take a deep breath and try to focus on one thing at a time. I'm going to grab some Moonology cards. I haven't even had coffee yet. That's why I sound like this. They're working on it out there. They are. Like I said, take time to breathe out. Okay, so now this is a continuation of where we just left off. Balance spirituality and practicality. The full moon Pisces. This is exactly what I've been saying. It's time to release negativity. Full Moon Scorpio is here again. Mm. Finding some some real balance here. Full, let's look at the Full Moon Pisces because you know Pisces is the last sign, so this might be like a something is ending here. Follow your intuition; it won't let you down. At worst, this card can herald the end of a dream. The person you're inquiring about is a soulmate. Avoid substance abuse. You are in a super romantic and not a super realistic state. Yeah, so this is what I was saying earlier about the pay attention to details or anything you've been willfully overlooking. It's time to grab a fine comb, you know. If you're in a tricky situation because you've been acting the martyr, this card can be a message from the cosmos to drop the act for everyone's sake. Hmm. Practicality is at odds with the numinous Piscean energies that have no borders, so feel your way now. Psychic ability is heightened when the full moon is in Pisces and soulmates now connect. It's also a time to send out your dreams to the universe, releasing your fears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> If you're like me and you've spent the most of the this year so far, it's only January 10th, but come on, you know, a lot can happen in 10 days. Sort of thinking about what you want to do, but not taking any concerted effort. It just didn't, you know, it just doesn't, to me, it hasn't felt like the right time to, like, execute anything significant. So, yeah, I have been just more so... Sort of thinking and evaluating and, and all that it's time to put aside the things that we've been daydreaming about so that we can get some work done and and the work here is to um, release yourself from any fear or negativity so that you know what to do and this comes in in contemplation and meditation this is meditation has been a huge theme at the beginning of this year it's still saying that again to meditate follow your intuition hmm 
And Full Moon Scorpio is here again. I'm pretty sure that was in the last video, you guys. Emote. It's all better out than in. Grudges are toxic. Let something go. The end of an argument. You have everything inside you to bring about your desired result. I feel like the, these messages for me are just like stuck in a loop. So if you're watching this and par specific parts of this resonate, then that's that's great. That's <laughs> I want to say good for you. But I, I need to know a little bit more details here about what, what we can do. You have what you need, so don't fear, right? You have what you need, so don't fear. Balance spirituality and practicality, as in... I see. Stop praying and wishing for things to happen because wishing for things to happen doesn't make them happen. Do something practical that can, you know, any practical step guided by your intuition is going to lead you in the right place. Don't be afraid to take that first step. Mm. That's the ticket. That's the ticket. Reminds me how like every time I, uh, before every hike, like in the wilderness, I always get a little bit nervous because I'm not sure what to expect in the wild. Then once I'm on the trail, usually I'm like, oh, this isn't bad. This is good. <laughs> Let's see where we go. Balance, here's balance again. Or this could be a little gift. Six of Pentacles. Ace of Cups. Oh. Interesting. Um, so, sorry, I got the Ace of Cups, Summer, Six of Swords, the Wise Old Tree, Ace of Swords, Nine of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, Eight of Cups, and the Wheel of Fortune. Oh boy, something is balancing out here, but it's um, it's it's the kind that um, some somebody here is challenging what they know um, in terms of what makes them in terms of what feels good to them what feels abundant what makes them feel confident and they've been you've been they you i'll say they or you you've been <laughs> you've been balancing this choice for so long whether or not this feels like a good fit it feels um because there's been some, I feel like there's been something in your life that Ace of Cups is extremely fulfilling. This could be like a love or a, a, a connection that just feels extremely positive, but also is sort of like, um, like too much in the sun causes a sunburn, you know, like, so it, it burns like really, it's very passionate, I guess I'll say. And it's, and yeah, it, it burns you out, I guess. It's like the sun. It, if you fly too close, you need to like leave and take a break or something. That's what's happening here. And so somebody's left to question whether or not what they know is true, the wise old tree. Has what you know about a particular situation caused you to become stiff in your, um, you know, in your, in your language, in your gestures, in your and you're something so ace of swords in the middle there's something new here new clarity ace of cups ace of swords there's some sort of new truth about what is what how to take steps towards what you feel like will be abundant right this is this is now you following your intuition your inner guidance and i think you're deciding here that this thing you've been juggling whatever whatever you've been has been feeling like a lot of work um, even though you've been managing pretty well to to balance all of the things in your life, I see somebody here leaving that 
to go leaving that if this is about the mercury retrograde then this is what i see is somebody sort of taking this time to go on an inner journey versus doing any sort of external work because the wheel of fortune is here the wheel it goes up and it goes down and so there are helpful times to be work you know when we say working with energies there's like good things for certain activities on during certain times and then there's good times to be doing other things when we're in retrograde you don't um you don't force things you don't you sort of just got to go with the flow so that you don't sort of get caught in the undertow of these waves uh, so that's exactly what's happening here it's like despite finding some confidence and despite feeling this is pre-empress energy so like the ability to make anything grow some truth here about like what is worth investing in this is like finding what you value this is the, this feels like the clarity of um the venus retrograde that came on january 8th when it touched the sun and suddenly we can see a little bit clearer like the fog in the tunnel just cleared up a little bit but it's not over we got two more weeks and so someone yeah i see the decision to go inward and not balance too many things um as a way to self in, as a way of self-preservation as a way of preserving your energy is a very smart move this is very smart because you what you don't want is the is a reverse at least a, you don't want to waste your emotion here go put it somewhere else for now balance your spirituality and practicality that way we got the wheel of fortune so this could be regarding either breaking a cycle a karmic pattern or simply just saying that divine timing is is at play and the time is not right because i don't see any action being taken what i see is somebody wanting some sort of like reciprocity some some sort of like equal give and take so this could be this could be like this could you could want this within yourself or you could want this in a particular situation either way it's something that feels really good to you but then is also very it like takes a lot of energy so it's like someone's trying to figure out how to do this without without their well running dry without so it's almost like how do i do this in a way that supports how do i deal with this situation whatever it is in a way that supports my energy and doesn't drain my energy and so either you figured it out or you are figuring it out or you're deciding there's no way that this can exist without draining my energy and you're sort of moving on i could see all of these possibilities because look there's <sighs> these two cards are like both moving on to like to calmer waters, <laughs> but also to, you know, going on some sort of deep solo journey, like, you know, something, something that is very deeply personal to you emotion on an emotional level. This could be somebody literally moving house in order to be, be, there's something that happens when you like change your physical environment. Like even when I'm here in this house, I'm not, wherever I am you know changing your environment has a lot of benefits and a lot it affects us very deeply to be put in a place where we are we don't normally just reside to be taken out of our comfort zone here so I feel like that's what's happening but it's a it's a choice it's a choice to get out from the familiar um, in order to see a new perspective on something and the something is all about chasing or wanting to discover what feels good and abundant and worth spending time on. And with that, this leg that's down here is asleep. 
So I'm going to read this out, but um, I'm going to end the reading right here. Because I hear dog toys in the other room, and it's it's a lot. Um, let me know if that resonates. We have the Nine of Swords underneath, so... This is possibly the anxiety here. Oh, and the seed underneath. A new start. And Empress. This is what happens when you when gratitude, so releasing your fear opens the door to abundance. You're saying, I don't have room for this fear anymore. I don't have I don't have the energy for this to consume my life. There's no more room for it. You could sort of just shake it out, laugh it out. And say, I only have room for dad jokes. Yeah, I only have room for, you know, and then fill, fill in this blank for yourself as to like, what's going to make you feel good in the moment. I only have room for watering my plants. That's all I'm doing today. That's all I ever want to do, even if it's not true. But you could sort of put that boundary, like that very strict boundary up for yourself. I only have time for blank. It's the only thing that will feel good to my soul right now. I only have time for drinking a cup of tea. I only have time, you know. That's one way of releasing negativity is just by not making room for it. Don't make room for it. It doesn't affect me. It does not. It's not here. Anyway, I hope that helps. And I hope you're doing well. And um, I don't know what else to say. So I have a good day, y'all. And I'll see you again tomorrow.